episode of Musical Chairs with me, Cheer Up Charlie. And today we have some two some peoples who I am very, very, very excited to interview. So I'll give you some clues as to who they are. If you don't know who they are, why don't you know who they are? They are Islanders. They are Islanders. They are Islanders. They are Islanders. No, literally, they are Islanders. <laughs> Um, there is not one, but two sensations currently sitting in my hot seat, and anyone that knows me knows will know how excited I am right now because their musical is my favourite musical of all time. They're Irene Sankoff and David Hine, everybody! Woo, 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 woo. Hello. Hi David, hi Irene. Hi Charlie. Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> Hello. Um, how are you? We're great. We're great. We're good. We're good. It's minus 18 in Canada right now. Mm. So we're all, we're all cozied up and yeah, not it's going around to minus one or minus two here. Not as cold as you. Yeah. We got a lot of snow, but we're, we're getting through. We're holding up and staying warm. Yeah. But, um, I've actually got something to show you that I got for my birthday and it's to do with come from away. Oh, good. Not the cake that you've already seen and the mailman must have eaten in the post. Um, <laughs> it's actually this. Oh, you've got the vinyl. I got the vinyl because I have a record player. So I got um, a very special friend of mine um, gave me, um, got me um, a double disc, blue disc version. Ooh, the blue disc. And it's so amazing and I absolutely love it. Have you listened to it on vinyl? Can I you hear the difference? To it all the time. Oh, so good. Cool. I'm so Very glad. Cool. We were so excited to have it come out on vinyl and I'm glad it, like, it's so cool to have. Um, you know, uh, some, some, I mean, when, when we were born, we had record players out. And so we listened to stuff on vinyl all the time. Um, yeah. But, uh, but it's very cool that it's, that it's making a comeback and that someone your age loves that as well. Yeah. So if you're ready, I'll get straight into the questions. Yeah. yeah. So did you both grow up loving the theater? And do you remember the first show that you ever saw that either of you ever saw because mine was the lion king and yes my first show that i ever did i dressed up as a lion singing i just can't wait to be king nice amazing nice <laughs> um so the first full musical i ever saw and this is going to show my age uh was guys and dolls at a local high school and i uh, and i absolutely loved it so yeah I, um and i guess i saw the movie of annie when i was about seven which is the daughter of my which is the age my daughter is now and uh yeah so i guess for as long as i can remember i I've, I've loved the theater yes yeah, I think I I saw a production of Romeo and Juliet in Saskatchewan in the prairies uh, in Canada, and I remember it because someone drove a motorcycle on stage, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Uh, and then the first musical I saw was probably Phantom of the Opera, and I played I played the cassette until it broke, and then I needed my parents to get me a new cassette of it. <laughs> so yeah, we both loved theater. <laughs> So um, did either of you ever want to be on the stage or did you both always prefer the creative side? I definitely wanted to be on the stage. I was a dancer. I started taking dance lessons when I was about three years old. Uh, and I'm actually going through a thing with my daughter now where she's the same age I was when I quit Kadaz because I was like, I don't like just doing the exercises. I want to perform. And it was like, well, but you have to do the exercises too. Anyway. So that's what we're going through right now. Um, and then I uh, went to a high school for the performing arts where I danced. And then I went, I had my master's actually in acting and performance. Mm. And uh, David and I were, he was a singer songwriter and I was being an actor. We never saw each other. So we decided to combine forces and write a show together that we could both be in. And that's how the writing happened. Cool. cool. Yeah. So let me just that get this straight. Um, you can both sing. We can, yeah. yeah we sing yeah. a lot. We sing a lot. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, that I was just making sure for something that will be coming up later. Um, okay, okay, yeah. So um, you moved to New York in 1999, where you lived for a few years, but then moved back to Canada, where you wrote your first hit show. How easy was it for you two to start writing together? Oh, so... So we started writing, like Irene said, just so that we could spend time together between our, our day jobs and our night jobs, we, we barely saw each other. So we thought, why don't we do a show in the Fringe, uh, the Fringe Festival? And 
and we put on a musical about my mom's and we wrote a bunch of songs about our, my family and uh and we put it on and it was uh it was really fun it is it can be hard writing together sometimes it was a ton of work yeah like you know it, like, as opposed to um showing up and just being told what to do and where to stand and what to say and you know that's also its own amount of work but when you're doing that and writing and rewriting and doing the laundry after every performance for all the actors <laughs> and drawing the posters and and being the box office yeah so it was yeah. a lot of work and on top of that you know we're married and we did it initially because we love each other but often when you're writing together um you have to when you you end up disagreeing about certain things and so you you end up sort of having to fight it out a little bit and find a compromise between each other. And so that, that, that's been a skill that, uh, that we've learned as writers and also one that's helped our marriage as well because we, you know, it helps us work out everything. Yeah, so um, going to the theater can be costly, especially if you're like me and would like to go on a weekly basis. How do we make the theater more accessible for families, underprivileged families? That's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, I think that it's something that we have to start valuing more as a society. Now that I'm living back in Canada uh, and uh, a little bit north of Toronto, I'm really aware of how important sports are and how people make concessions for sports. And I think that we need to start to do the same thing for the arts because a lot of what you get from being a, a part of a sport or on a team you get the same thing from being in the theater and you know i know sports events are also very costly and they and but there are things that happen to make people be able to go to them and i think the same thing has to be true of the theater yeah and i think there's you know we have an amazing grant program here in canada which uh come from away was built on they the government gave us money to create the art but i also think it's important to subsidize the theaters and the theater producers so that people are able to give ten dollar tickets for students or or cheap seats so that so that everyone is able to go see the theater it should mm -hmm. not be only there for people who are able to afford high price tickets and it should not yeah. be the first thing that's cut when their cuts are coming through the education system you know no, no one would even think about cutting a sport would never even say like oh you know what it's hockey's too expensive this year here in canada it, the same should be true of the arts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so what was it like to be um, to be approached by Michael Robinoff about his idea about a show based on Operation Yellow Ribbon and Newfoundland? Well, we've been living in New York on 9-11. So we sort of, we knew a little bit about the story. We knew that planes had been landed there because uh, people had come up to us and said, thank you for taking planes. And we said, well, we didn't actually do anything, but um, uh, yeah, you're but you're welcome. On behalf of our people. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when we found out the story, when Michael approached us and said, do you know what happened in Gander? We got really excited because it was a story that made us feel proud that we were Canadians, but it also was a story that reminded us that people were good in the world and that in a time of darkness that people could respond by being good to one another. And so we yeah. started researching it and we found out more and more and we found out there was going to be a 10 year anniversary happening in Gander and we went out there, got a grant from the government and uh, and got to interview just everyone out there. And the more we interviewed people, the more we found out, you know, exactly how good people could really be. <laughs> so you visited Gander in 2011 during the 10 year reunion, like you just said, with, passen um, with passengers and locals where you then came away and wrote the best musical ever. Where did you get the name Come From Away From? That is somebody who doesn't, who isn't from uh, Newfoundland, who isn't from the island. They're called the Come From Away. And there just seemed to be a nice double meaning of being a Come From Away and almost like a, it sounds like an invitation, like, you know, come join us, Come From Away. Yeah, I remember when Irene first suggested it. She, it was, it felt sort of like a little a piece of poetry or something like that. But we were also very worried that no one would understand what it meant. And our our Broadway producers equally were like, the problem with this show is no one will ever remember the title. It's about 9/11 and it has no stars in it. And so the title was a problem from the beginning. But luckily, we put it on a lot of posters and people have started to remember it. Yeah, I can't forget it. <laughs> So I am shocked at how greedy you both are. How many awards and nominations have you collected so far, including Tony nominations and Olivier award winners? 
how incredible does that feel? It's amazing. We're also Adora Award winners here <laughs> in, in Canada. Canada yeah. um, I just felt the need to have to point that out. I know. I know. Remiss for me not to. Um, uh, it's uh, well, you know, we've had to enlarge the mantle. It's uh, it's you know, right now our awards are in two different countries because we came back to Canada, not thinking we were going to be here that long. But uh, somehow our Olivier Award ended up with us here, but all the others are in. New York, it's very strange. So it's clearly the one that we love the most. Yes, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I think the awards, what the awards really say is, I mean, it's a testament to our whole group, to, to our director and our actors and our musicians and our music supervisors, everyone. But also it's a testament to the story that we're telling. It feels like every award is a celebration of that. And so that's yeah. why they're nice to have. So I'm very passionate about people doing what they love and not what people think they should do. Hashtag Cheer Up Charlie was born just over 18 months ago now due to my decision to make a stand against bullying after suffering both physically and mentally. And I'm now very lucky to be in a position to use my voice and speak to people like you that give my generation the hope that things will change. But change needs to be learned. How can we help get over this massive negativity around the arts, especially when most behavior is learned from the adults around them? Mm. Yeah, I think we have to call it out when we see it gently, you know, educate people. I mean, I come from a, a sports loving family who really discouraged the theater on the one side, on the other side, not so much. So I was lucky from the beginning that there were people encouraging me uh, at the same time as there are people discouraging me. So I think, I think it has to come from I think it has to come from the adults as much as possible, the yeah. ones that are supportive. They, they, they need to call out when they're seeing things that aren't right. And I think the ones that need a little bit more education, I think that's on all of us. That's on us as kids. It's on other allies to say, you know what, let's relook at what we're saying to our kids about the arts and about doing what they love. And yeah. there should be one way to be, because there really isn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so many different ways to be an infant man. So I hope in the near future to get industry leaders together and put on a whole day's workshop for children that have never experienced the magic of the arts. Do you think that's something that could be possible? I, I definitely, so. yeah. I, I'd like yeah. to attend it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to see, I mean, so many kids don't have access to this that I think, um, I, you know, and there's so much, so many different types of art, you know, everyone can be inspired by a different piece. And it's, I had a friend who's just gone into politics who was saying that the arts have inspired him and he doesn't view his politics as that's, he's gonna use his art in that politics. And I think that everyone can use more art in their life, no matter yeah. what. So from the very beginning, kids, kids, the arts are an incredibly important part. So yeah, it would be wonderful. So have either of you two ever been bullied or ever seen bullying? Yeah, I was I was bullied pretty badly. I remember I there were kids who challenged me to fights and like pushed me and hit me when I was in school. Um, I I I I grew up and I, um, I I'm very I'm very tall right now. But as I was growing up, I would I would put on a lot of weight and then I would grow very tall and then I would put on a lot of weight and then I would grow very tall. So I, I was often teased for that. And the fact that I had messy, crazy hair. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I think kids, you, you know, they were really mean um, uh, sometimes. And kids can be really mean. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud of what you're doing. Uh, you're, Thank you're, you. you know, not you're not only doing it you know i can see it just in you uh, you're doing an amazing thing but also i think you're doing it for kids around the world and i wish i had had uh you know shows like this and people like you that i could look up to when i was a kid thank you i uh, i really grew up at a time where if um if someone if a boy threw a snowball at you or if they like pulled your bra strap or something that was a big you know like it's because he likes you thing so it that really, that really plays with your head and, and it makes you think a lot of behavior that isn't acceptable is acceptable and is actually positive attention. Uh, and I'm glad that we're, we're stopping that now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm glad that we're saying, that's not cool. you know, maybe he does like you, but that's not the way you show it. And there's something not right in that he thinks that it is and to be wary of stuff like that. I also am very wary about people saying that um, people who are perpetrators in schools of acts of violence, they say, oh, well, you know, it's because, you know, people weren't nice to them. 
I was really nice to a lot of kids that I shouldn't have been nice to. And I put up with a lot of things that I shouldn't have put up with because I thought I was being nice. So uh, I know that's part of our brand is being nice, but being nice does not mean being a doormat. It doesn't mean letting people take advantage of you. That's something else altogether. Um, you have to be treated with respect. Yeah. So who is both of your biggest influencers? Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's so hard. Uh, um, I, I mean, I, 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 we're influenced by so many musicians, but there's so many wonderful Canadian musicians who have influenced us and many, many Newfoundland musicians who I grew up, who were my musical heroes um, from Great Big Sea to Shani Ganuk. And, uh, and one of the really exciting things about doing Come From Away is we've gotten to work with them now and meet <laughs> them all. And uh, it's really cool to do, do something about celebrating something that you love. Uh, it leads to often you getting to meet the people who inspired you in the first mm. place. So that's, that's been really wonderful. Uh, I've always been a big fan of Carol Burnett. Um, I, <clears throat> I have a lot of dance heroes. I, I love Dan Ranking, I love Anne Ranking. Um, and then it just, uh, you know, just people in our community, you know, like there is a, a woman that ran a restaurant that helped me out a lot when Molly was just born because she was also a mother running her own business and trying to deal with all of that. Um, you know, it, it changes. It changes who my biggest influence on our community yeah. are. My biggest are. Yeah. So um, if either of you could give yourself some advice as a child, knowing what you know now as an adult, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Uh, I, yeah, I think honestly, like being nice doesn't mean not being good to yourself. It, being okay. nice doesn't mean putting other people before you if they're doing things to you that aren't okay. Yeah, I think about, I mean, we, we've, we've, we've done a little bit of um, promotion for It Gets Better. And, and I, I, think, I think there are really hard times. It is really hard to, to grow up. And, and partly that what I've learned is that those times, just like in Come From Away, that there are dark, going to be dark times in your life. And to know that they will come, that you are going to stumble and fall and skin your knee or, you know, or, or something's going to wrong or you will get bullied, but that you can, the way that you can respond to that, uh, there are ways that you can grow from that and it can become a story that you can tell and it can become part of your character, how, how you've overcome it. And so sometimes, you know, it's knowing that th that life is a balance about that, uh, and and that you will get through it. It will get better, and that you can and that you can become stronger because of it. Yeah, there's something my mom used to always say to me, even when I, like I wasn't telling her I was going through a hard time. She would just look at me and she'd be like, "It's not forever," and I'd be like, "What's she talking about?" But now I kind of get it. You know what I mean? Like it's like whatever is happening, good, bad, boring. It's not forever. Like it's gonna change. Like lockdown, it's bad and it's boring, but it's not forever. <laughs> It's not forever. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are waiting. We're, we're very excited that our, um, I, I, you probably see, have seen this, but our Australian company uh, just opened mm. and it feels, yeah. like, uh, it feels like that was hope for all of us that it's not forever, that we are going to get through this and we're going to be back on a stage soon and watching yeah. musicals. Soon. Yeah. And I'm so excited. The first thing I'm going back to see is come from away again, again, uh -huh. again. <laughs> I would I would watch it like three times in a day if there were three performances in a day. <laughs> if there was more than just a math day in an evening. Uh, we would, that's amazing, Charlie. We would love to have you back as soon as we can. Yeah. And I hope that we can be in the theater with you sometime and enjoy it together. Yeah, that'd be so cool. So um, now for some funny questions. <laughs> so um, I get told off on a daily basis for asking questions that I know have absolutely no no answer. So come on, David, why don't you say one of Irene's worst habits? And Irene, say one of David's. Oh, oh, does he really, you're gonna get us both in trouble with each other. <laughs> um, worst habits. Worst. Um, I, you know what it is, honestly, it, like for David, and it might be the same for me. It's the phone. It's the yeah, yeah. Like it's, uh, you know, and then, and then it's like, what time is it? What, what? Yeah. Yeah. We lose so phone much, addiction. so much time what, scrolling on phones. Um, I, yeah. Irene likes to look at houses on, on, on real estate things and cats. And cats. cats, I love cats. cats. <laughs> I look at cats. Yeah. 
cats yeah. a lot. And, I'm like, can we get another cat? And, yeah. I, and I scroll on Twitter, uh, which is which is how we actually connected. Um, and yes. I find I find that uh, a certain amazing young men have the same birthday as me and have birthday cakes that are decorated like come from away. So I don't think my Twitter addiction is a problem at all because it needs to <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So um what is the most embarrassing thing that you have seen each other do? Because one of you must have tripped up at like a red carpet event or something. What are the most embarrassing things? Oh, oh I feel like There's we so I feel like we embarrass oh, ourselves Jesus. constantly um, at things. Um at the Olivier's uh, a oh. button popped off of my jacket and it wouldn't do up to uh, together right before we were entering the thing and our wonderful friend, um, Kathy, frantically tried to find a safety pin for me. So I, I feel like yeah. I'm constantly having uh, costume malfunctions where, yeah, where yeah. I just don't know how to dress myself properly and um, <laughs> messing up. Uh, at the Tony Awards, uh, I was wearing this awful gold dress and I had like, sorry, but you should know this. It was beautiful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I was in a lot of support garment and uh, toward the end of the show, I was I couldn't stand it anymore. And during a commercial break, I was like, David, you have to pull it down. Like you have to go up my dress and pull it down. Like I was so over it and I was so hot because the Tony Awards apparently are always on the hottest day of the year. That's what the crew guys said. He was like, you just wait, it'll be the hottest day of the year and they can't run the air conditioning. So I was we were sitting in the audience and I was like, I just stood up and I was like, you've got to pull these support guards down and off of me. And there were people in front of us and below us are just looking at us like, what is your problem? And I was like, I don't care. I need to get out of this or I will. Yeah. Yeah. You, Maybe that would have been the more graceful thing to do, but whatever. I hope someday you get to go to the Tony's Charlie, but they are like five hours long and they're very hot and there's no snacks. There's so. no snacks. And there's no snacks. Water. No. What, yeah, what, so, what, what type of what what cruel person comes up with that? The hottest day of the year and no snacks. Exactly. And yeah. No snacks yeah. and no water. And like yeah. no water. No, like, nah, that's ridiculous. I mean, maybe you can drink water, but I didn't because I was locked in this dress, so I couldn't go to the bathroom. So I, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the water. this is one of the advantages of, of the lockdown. When they finally do the Tony Awards this year, everyone everyone will have a tuxedo top on and shorts on their bottom, and they'll feel very yeah. comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is one of my favorite things to ask. What is someone? What is something that no one knows about you till today, but it has to be disgusting? Oh, okay. What? Uh, what is that? No one knows. No one. Uh, um, so we have a lot of cats, and I grew up with a lot of dogs. Uh, and my daughter was constantly asking me, "Is cat food and dog food good?" And I finally admitted her that I did try dog food when I was a kid, and it was not that bad. It was. Dry. Oh no, no, David. I was a kid, oh you know. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm a kid and I wouldn't even dream of even just putting it close <laughs> to my nose. Uh, what's something this? I don't. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's nothing disgusting. No, about well, it. like I mean, but it's and but anything I can think of is also just kind of boring. Like, <laughs> like I used I can't do it anymore because I got arthritis from doing this. Oh, so yeah, don't try okay. this at home. But I used to be able to like do the splits with my fingers. Like I used to be able to like. Like I had wacko flexy hands and I used to be able to like pull my thumb down to here. I can't do it anymore, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Irene's hypermobile. Yeah. That's that she and, and she's an incredible dancer because of it, but it does it does lead to- And now I have trouble have walking sometimes. So yeah, not, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So um, now's for a round of quick fire questions. Oh, oh geez, uh -oh. okay. Clearly we're not gonna be good at that. Um, wow. So- um, I'll say the question and then one of you answer, then the other answer. That'd probably be the easiest way to do it. Okay. Who would you go and eavesdrop on if you were invisible? Who wouldn't I? Jeez, I like, I, oh my God. That's like my dream. Um, to be uh, invisible. I just listen to everybody. Okay, but who? But who? Uh, uh, anybody. Like, I, I'm not picky. Like, really. I'm not, I'm not picky. I'm going to go, like, spy on them. I'm not picky. <laughs> random house. Well, no, that's why I sit in coffee shops for so long, or I used to in the before times. Like, you just listen to people, and it's just amazing. 
Like, remember that one woman? <laughs> oh God, when she was like, oh, she was terrible. She, oh gosh, I'm people watching. People, people watching. Yeah, I, we're not even asking, we're not even totally answering the question. Um, no. I, I I read the newspaper a lot, and I'm very interested in politics. So I am kind of interested in in like sneaking into Parliament or the White House or something like that, and and just hearing what goes on and seeing if it if they're actually quite silly and and not as serious. Yeah, that's depressing. I, don't, I actually don't know that I would. You don't. Want to do that. <laughs> that's I don't depressing. Now, like three months ago, I would not have gone and sat. But maybe now, maybe now I go and eavesdrop on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> favorite superhero oh um so i'm gonna go spider-man because uh so one of the one of my favorite things that happened with come from away is that uh our stage manager was best friends with the editor of spider-man and so he one day uh we were going out i'm still thinking i don't have a favorite superhero spoiler i'm You're thinking so i know i'm embarrassing me. you right now yeah. I'm, thinking. I'm a huge superhero geek, He's a big but, geek but anyway so i got invited out um for drinks with the editor of spider-man and uh and i i was like of course i'm going and then we had this big long like the the geekiest conversation i've ever had where I, we talked about spider sense we talked about all our favorite comics and at the end, they were like, you know, you're not interested in writing a Spider-Man comic, are you? And I was like, are you kidding? And so I got to write a backup story for Spider-Man. Uh, and it was like the most exciting thing uh, that ever happened to me. And I think I was more excited than anyone, uh, you know, and everyone else was like, oh, cool, you're doing a comic. And I was like, but it's, but it's. So yeah, I go with Spider-Man. Well, That's like awesome. mom and dad were like, um, oh, and guess, um, and you're interviewing David Hyde and I were in Sankoff. And I was like, <gasps> And everyone else was like, yeah, that's a really good interview. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we felt the same, Charlie. Same, same, same as being interviewed by you. So Irene, no? I, how could I top that enthusiasm? I'm gonna have to like, I don't, I, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I could be lame and be like Wonder Woman or she's a girl, you know what I mean? But like, uh, I don't really, I don't know. Stacey Abrams is pretty awesome. You know, Nancy Pelosi really into her right now. Like, not uh, technically superheroes, but okay. Uh, but, 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 but awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, favorite city. Favorite who? What? Favorite, favorite city. city. Oh, don't make us choose between. <laughs> uh, uh, so we, we consider Toronto and uh, and New York our homes. Uh, at the same time. Um, is La Jolla a city? San Diego. San Diego's a city and La Jolla is just a little area. hamlet subdivision. I, I don't think they'll take suburb to a hamlet, but yeah. Uh, when we when we went down to San Diego, it was as Canadians, it was the most sun we had ever had in our lives. And it was so beautiful and wonderful. And there were palm trees everywhere. It was I can't believe people live like that, that they never get cold. <laughs> except for they do because they've gone soft but like it's it, yeah but uh, no 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 i also love seattle i love london uh uh where where did we go on our honeymoon we went to italy <laughs> we went to we went to rome i'm glad it was memorable um uh, i'm really liking one of those uh oh yeah there's a few uh, the, the lake district yeah. in Lag lago maggiore it's also in, not a in city Italy. though but, it, but it's a town a it's like a hamlet i'll let you off i'll let you off okay i know sorry okay well focus very quick fair questions <laughs> yeah yes right, right. childhood book Ooh. I mean, comic books, every single comic book, Atari Force, Spider-Man, uh, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, every sp comic book that came out. No. We would not have been friends, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm just as, I'm just, I'm just as nerdy weird um, because I'm a big Anne of Green Gables fan, Canadian. Um, I love Laura Ingalls Wilder. I know there's some questionable moments that we have to discuss when we read them to our children now. Um, uh yeah i like a lot of classics with female uh, protagonists like usually i remember my dad wanted me to read all these books and that they all had male protagonists so no offense but i was like i just this isn't for me like i want to read about girls oh i've got one uh, watership down i loved watership down that's so depressing no it's beautiful it's okay. funny <laughs> david's like i love the things <laughs> <laughs> please don't read it anybody don't read it because you're like oh bunnies Last song downloaded. It's a dark part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Focus. Last song downloaded. Oh, last song downloaded. I don't know how to download. 
because I'm from the 1900s. Uh, honestly, uh, honestly, we, most of the music that we download right now is for our, our daughter. So yeah. like Demi Lovato, uh, Commander in Chief, that's probably the most recent um, one that, that we downloaded. Oh, very, and yeah. uh, and she, yeah, she's listening to a lot of Demi Lovato. Uh, we have not downloaded a, a lot of music, maybe some Newfoundland music, because I try to keep up with everyone out there. But we're parents. We, we, you know, I've gotten really boring. Like seriously, like I think I was listening to some Billy Joel the other day, and my daughter was like, "Turn it off!" Yeah, so <laughs> that's my life. Burger or pizza? Oh, together? Okay. Yeah, we're that's in. That's great. Yep. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, so we go. There's the answer to that question. Broadway or West End? Um, oh, that's 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 hard. Am I wearing heels? Because it is easier, believe it or not, to walk on a New York street in heels. Uh, in the West End, uh, I because mean, things like Covent Garden cobbles and that I kind of get. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have cried. I, I was like, I am not gonna make it. Like, yeah, I, I was doing a Christmas concert, and um, we all had to um, we all had to help like piggyback somebody because they were because they were specifically told not to wear high heels because we were in the middle of Covent Garden, and they wore high heels. We had to like help piggyback them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like, even a awful. sensible wedge isn't gonna do it. Like you're you're. <laughs> Yeah, and we talked about how like I'm super bendy flexy. That goes to my ankles too. Like, I mean, if I go over, I go over. So, uh, although I have fallen magnificently on some Broadway streets too. So I may need to watch from home uh, where it's safe. <laughs> I like both of them, but we, but we, the, the West End felt very exciting because, oh my because God. Uh, yeah. I mean, certainly Broadway was something we never expected. We thought come from away would, would you know, be forced on high school students in Canada, and that was as far as it would go. So, <laughs> and it will be, I'm sure. But, but the fact that it went to Broadway <laughs> was amazing, and then it went to the West End. So it felt even, to some degree, it felt even bigger. And we won the Olivia there, so it it was very, it was felt really welcoming and celebrated. Yeah, Harry Potter house. Oh, Gry uh, Gryffindor. We're on we're on book six. We're reading it to our daughter right now. Uh, uh, so I am the biggest Harry Potter fan ever. Watched them all, read them all, currently collecting the 20th anniversary editions. Um, I've got a den in the nice. back garden themed on Harry Potter. Yes. Really? Okay, well, um, I, I am a huge Harry Potter fan as well. I've got over 20, um, I've got over 20 wands. I collect all the collector's items. So I have Horcruxes and Lucius Malfoy's staff and all sorts. But you have to destroy the Horcruxes. You can't collect no. them. <laughs> uh, uh, that, actually, his birthday party was Harry Potter themed. It was actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just recently, my last one, we had all the, all the Harry Potter stuff and I still yeah. have Gryffindor pencils that were given to me. Wow. Yeah, I have a scarf, I have a, I have a Quidditch sweater, um, yep. everything. And we, and I have we a recently fireball. went to... Uh, what? That's amazing. <laughs> Hanging from the uh, ceiling of my den. Have you been to Harry Potter World? Yes, amazing, right? We yes. went there and our, our daughter, she has uh, Hermione's wand and the fact that she could do magic with it there, it, it, was, it was so, I mean, it was magic. It was amazing. And that, it, like, it felt like, it felt like amazing theater, right? And have you seen Cursed Child? Yeah. Part so beautiful. Right? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But we're not going to put any spoilers out there. No. Okay. No, no Irene's Hufflepuff. I'm Gryffindor. That's where we were. I'm a Slytherin. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Okay. We can still be friends. <laughs> Text or talk? I'll talk. Yeah. It's always better. Yeah. Favorite Harry Potter character? Oh. Oh, that's hard. Um, so I do all the voices for my daughter he like crazy. Insane. So so oh my God. so Luna Lovegood is like this, and I'm good is like this. I do and Dumbledore is like this, and so I love doing all of them. But I really, uh, so, yeah. Dobby was that Dobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry Potter, no, sir, no. Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I I've got to go Hagrid. He's the first one you meet in the books, and I I just I just love him. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, uh, 
I, I mean, again, I don't want to say Hermione just because she's the female, but I, I guess. I mean, she's I, also awesome. I know, but like, you know, there could be a lot of awesome females. McGonagall, she's awesome. All the females are awesome. Every, all, all the girls are awesome in the books. The boys are the ones who are constantly, um, you know, making mistakes and tripping over themselves and not telling each other what they ought to tell each other and yeah the girls okay. are smart yeah come on okay. two things yeah. to take to a deserted island oh uh okay um, uh irene no no wait a second when we say deserted but like we're in like we we've got like a hotel situation though right like or, or am i needing to pack essentials no, it's a deserted oh, island shit. you're not glamping on it i know you could be <laughs> there could be a deserted like a leftover hotel from a long time ago um, I would be very sad without my guitar. I, I mean, I get to I get to take my family, right? Because I take my family and my cats. Uh, yeah, family and cats. There you go, family and cats. Um, yeah. But I, I'd, I'd go guitar too, although the you know eventually they'd get sick of me playing guitar and then we'd use it as a raft or something like that. Yeah, we yeah. need a raft, so bring the guitar. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know how I was um I was I asked you whether you could sing. Well, here's uh -huh. where it's going to come in handy. Do you think you could sing me the first verse of Welcome to the Rock? Ah, uh, okay. This is actually hard because I always think of the original that was before Broadway, and yeah. I always think of that one, and then, okay, we can try. Yeah, we were just working on, um, we're working on, we did a show in New York called Cut From Away with the old lyrics, so that's the one that we currently have in our head. Cool. So, uh, so you, that, you might that, get that. very... <laughs> uh so so uh one two one two three four welcome to the rock come from oh, uh, ways. I, that's what yeah that's the old that's welcome the old the old one is welcome to the townies who have come from a ways welcome to the locals who have always said they say my father's father's father crashed a ship into this rock heaven or hell don't matter much as here i'm stuck ah welcome to the rock welcome to newfoundland it's father to no it's farther to Manhattan I, I, than it is to Ireland. Man. They say and no man's an island, but an island makes a man, especially when one comes from one like Newfoundland. And that's when you come in, Charlie, because you sang that brilliantly, and it, it, we may be looking for a standbys at some point. So please keep singing like that. Because <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're that welcome. was so awesome. Thank you. Very welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for that. Woo! That was so amazing. I loved it so much. Um, so good news and bad news. You got through the interview is the good news, but the interview is over is the bad news. But well done for getting through the interview. Woo -hoo. <laughs> thank you. So thank you so much for doing this, David, Irene. It was such a pleasure and an honor interviewing you and I loved it so much. Well, thank same you. for we us. Loved it too. Yeah, it was really thank nice you. to meet you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. I loved Take it care. so much. Um, and have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Take care. Take good Bye. Care. Have a good weekend. You too. you too. What an amazing interview. I loved that. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it so much. So if you want to see more interviews like that, because I know I want to do more like that, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications button and go follow my Instagram to help make a change. Just four clicks help make a change to help change the world okay so go do it come on we can beat them bullies and we can make a change to our world just four clicks bye